Hello, thanks for tuning in to Tech TV News and Views Bulletin. Today we'll discuss Christy Blatchford's article on National Post calls Trudeau government's gender initiatives exhausting. Toronto Star article reveals that the attainment of Canadian citizenship rates had dropped during the Harper era. Mark Zuckerberg apologized for the breach of trust. Christy Blatchford, a Canadian newspaper columnist and journalist, released an article on National Post today titled, Trudeau government's needless obsession with gender is exhausting. In the article, she discusses the new guidelines given to Service Canada employers to use gender-neutral language to avoid portraying perceived bias towards any sex or gender. This entails using client's full name instead of Mr., Mrs., or Miss, or simply asking them how they'd like to be addressed. Blatchford said that the Trudeau government's insistence on viewing the world through an equity lens is pervasive and exhausting. She gave an example of Justin Trudeau's speech at the World Economics Forum in Davos, where he urged big corporations to hire more women, and his statements on Canada's stabilization mission in Mali involving plenty of women in uniforms. Joining us to discuss the column is Sarah Bokhari. She is a former professor of politics at Humber College. Sarah, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Ayush, for having me. No worries. Uh, it's a pleasure always. And now my first question to you is, um, now you read the, you probably read the article, and I want to ask you, in a society where sexual assaults, wage gap, or lack of recognition for LGBTQ community continues to be an issue, is it so wrong for a prime minister to make maximum efforts to involve these groups in every sector? Um, I will start by saying it is not at all wrong for the Prime Minister to include these communities. I'm a strong proponent of uh, LGBTQ community. I actually did uh, two shows recently on my TV show with the LGBTQ community. I have been uh, actually teaching this philosophy at my college. Um, I have been involved with the LGBTQ Tory, uh, raising awareness uh, to include LGBT, our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and uh, they have a right to equally coexist with the rest of the communities. And um, so, if the like whatever past uh, uh, precedents the prime minister has taken, I agree with them. But uh, using the gender neutral terms is a little more like he stretched it too far okay well do you think uh people who um may not i mean conform to their gender that they may be perceived to be uh say someone is perceived to be a female but does not conform to that gender do you think they would actually appreciate these new guidelines given to service canada employees so how i'm gonna put it is and i was having a heated debate uh, yesterday with uh, one of the counterparts um, on mm -hmm. social media yeah. is I think these um, uh, these edicts or these um, directives should be uh, gender um, should be from person to person yeah. for example if I'm going there at Service Canada desk and if someone is calling me from a gender neutral name I'm going to I'm going to take offense on it because okay. I do not want to be called through a gender neutral term. At the same time, we want to be very clear. What are these gender neutral terms? Are these just our names or something else? Uh, but as far as, uh, L, the, you know, people from the LGBTQ community who do not conform to either a male um, sexual, uh, sexual identity or a female sexual identity, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. These terms go very well with them, but again, you know, in Mizabi, Canada is so multicultural, it's diverse. People have their personal identities, people have their personal outlooks on, on things, and uh, for me, and I know a lot of people who agree that I don't want uh, the, the, you know, the society to call me with gender neutral terms because i am a woman and i'd like to be called from that perspective and there is a huge reason i have my th these are my following identities i'm a brown muslim 
woman, widow from a country called Pakistan, where women were really, really subjugated. And if mm-hmm. I could tell you, and I'm telling it with full disclosure, when I was growing up in Pakistan, I was three years old. I wanted to be a boy. You want to know? Ask why? Because. Mm-hmm. Because I was not equal in two girls. Boys can do everything. Girls cannot. Yeah. Uh, small, like five-year-old boys could go out in the rain and take a shower in the rain, whereas girls cannot. Boys mm-hmm. could go out, play in the streets on a bike. Girls cannot. Boys could go out all alone, uh, you know, have a picnic with their folks. Girls cannot. So I had to face a lot of hurdles to be wherever I am right now. And Canada has given me my identity of a woman. I love being a woman now. However, I was facing a lot of problems being a woman in Pakistan because women are subjugated. They are not free. They mm-hmm. they they are they are attached with with uh, cultural uh, cultural and patriarchal um, ideologues and identifiers. They women in uh, Pakistan comes with a lot of baggage. However, when I came to Canada, Canada gave me myself. Canada gave me the confidence to be a woman, and I love being a woman in Canada. And I would like to be called as such. Okay, so while um, your standpoint as a female also makes uh, a lot of sense, now do you think that guidelines given to service uh, Canada employees, um, now the guidelines also include the fact that you can also ask the client what they would uh, be like to call or addressed as, do you think that makes sense? See, uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has again stretched it too far and uh, because now he has stretched it, I'm not in. A, I'm not agreeing with this directive. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, you know, um, I do. Miss, I do uh, respect all LGBT community. I've done a lot of work. I promoted the idea. I promoted LGBTQ uh, Tory. But um, I'd say yes to your question because mm-hmm. it it should be uh, from person to person. If you don't want to be called by uh, salutations, which are gender neutral, that's fine. I want to be called uh, through my uh, female gender and I and everyone should respect it. So I believe we should respect our LGBTQ community who, and we should respect everyone, whatever uh, salutations they want to be called, they should be called. But personally, I want to be called through Mrs. Yeah. Okay, um, now moving on to the article, uh, what do you think Christy Blatchford is trying to say when she mentions that uh, Trudeau government's needless obsession uh, with gender is exhausting? Do you think she's speaking from a place <laughs> of privilege where she is perhaps uh, failing to recognize the plight of racialized women or other women and uh, the LGBTQ community? I don't, first of all, I don't think so. You can put the racialized communities is in, in, in the same compartment as LGBTQ community. Uh, racialized uh, groups sh- should be, you know, in a, in a different, there is a watershed between the two. You mm-hmm. have to put them in two different compartments. Um, and um, sorry, I, I just, I just lost you there. So, you, uh, you know, I would connect it to uh, Justin Trudeau's, um, uh, you know, the, it was a joke all around. He's ca- people kind instead of human beings. Yeah. If human beings are mankind. He said people kind. And again, that he is stretching it way too much. There are languages in which there is um, a gender, particularly for like French. French language uh, has the same, um, uh, you know, same interpretations as Urdu language or Hindi language mm-hmm. where the words are female and male. Is it yeah. going to change the French language? Miss, this is a way too much because, um, again, there are uh, people who would like to uh, be called through their female and male genders and, um, you know, p- j- j- just painting the entire masses with one paint, I think it's not fair. With people like uh, those people who would like to be identified through ge- through their g- gender. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's see where the conversation takes us, Sarah. Uh, thank you for joining us. A Toronto Star report released yesterday revealed that the percentage of immigrants with Canadian citizenship dropped between 2011 and 2016 due to Harper-era citizenship policy changes. According to the new stats, Canada's overall naturalization rate fell to 82.7% from 85.6% during the period in which Stephen Harper raised the residency, language and knowledge requirements along with the citizenship application fee. 
Joining us to discuss the recent finding is Espendiar Wadiwala. He is a political and cultural activist. Espendiar, thank you for joining us. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, in relation to the findings uh, in the Toronto Star article, I would like to ask you, are the Conservative Party members backing this report and the stats pre uh, presented in the report? The report which has been uh, published yesterday in the pro-liberal star newspaper, which is a left-wing newspaper of our country, uh, as the, the previous uh, immigration officer has stated in his analysis, that the immigration risk ratio has fallen to 82.6% mm -hmm. from from 85.7% earlier during Stephen Harper's era. The reason he has cited in his article is that that due to a more influx uh, of immigrants from Latin Latin America, Asia, and African countries, those people are less educated. Yes. Therefore, uh, the ratio of taking the citizenship has also decreased. Whereas, whereas even the present government has reduced the fees also. Okay. Uh, uh, earlier, the conservative had a very stringent immigration policy, but still, uh, do you, even if the fees were higher than at, at the current times, but still the ratio was much higher. And it is really, really sad that the citizenship applications have reduced instead of increasing. Yeah. No, exactly. Uh, well, now, this is sure to be an issue because they're blaming it on the Harper era that um, it is because his Stephen Harper's uh, uh, policy changes that the um, that the rates dropped. Now, this is sure to be an issue in the 2019 national elections. How do you think leader Andrew Scheer is going to defend the ideology of conservative party towards immigrants in the face of these new findings? Definitely, the question will be raised during the 219 federal elections by the conservatives and its uh, people who are contesting uh, on the platform of immigration that during our time, the immigration policy was much healthier and it was much better than the current times. Uh, uh, just now, in the last two years, you have seen the influx of heavy refugees. That main thrust is to get refugees into Canada. Mm -hmm. He's just dumping those refugees from the left wing Islamic countries. Okay, well, it's uh, we have yet to see how this new issue will be taken up by the opposition. But thank you for joining us and giving us a bit of your uh, viewpoint on this. Finally, breaking five days of silence, Mark Zuckerberg apologized for major breach of trust in the light of a privacy scandal involving a data mining firm connected to President Donald Trump himself. He said he's sorry that happened and said Facebook has a responsibility to protect its users' data. News broke out on Friday revealing that Cambridge may have used data improperly obtained from about 50 million Facebook users to try and sway the elections. Cambridge's clients include Donald Trump's general of election campaign. Now joining us to discuss the news story is Anis Farooqi. He is a political analyst and Tech TV anchor. Anis, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Now Facebook, uh, we know, has already lost 8% uh, of their shares, which translates into 46 billion of company's market value. Do you think the loss is going to get worse or is this it? Well, it will continue its course uh, based on the current events, mm -hmm. um, but I don't see a big dip or uh, it's, it always goes through uh, valleys and peaks uh, through in the recent years mm -hmm. based on their activities. But this breach was uh, the serious one uh, in the recent history. So I think uh, it will affect them economically, but again, uh, there are billions of users who are yeah. will continue to use it. We all already know that uh, Facebook is not the most popular social media application that is currently the Any, generation anymore, is using. Yeah. There are other apps which mm -hmm. are taking over. So it is a time for uh, Mr. Zuckerberg to think about it, sit down and revisit uh, yeah. the entire Facebook mm -hmm. uh, going forward. Okay. Do you think this may result in people deactivating their accounts if uh, they find out? Uh, I, I think the, um, uh, the older generation will continue to use it. Okay. Uh, because they are still getting a hang of it. But mm -hmm. uh, younger generation, they've already chosen different variety of applications. That's so, true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, um, what steps are Mark, is Mark Zuckerberg or Facebook saying they're going to take uh, in order to secure users' data, data now? Yeah. Well, they should have done their due diligence uh, in the first place, yeah. which they have not. Now, 
people do not trust. There is a trust deficit, uh, mm -hmm. and I think uh, a, an external audit is required yeah. that will satisfy the consumers mm -hmm. who use Facebook. If there is an internal Facebook team, now the trust is not there. Okay. So I think um, uh, Mark has to think about it seriously that uh, an external audit agency should come in and see their procedures, how they are protecting the data uh, database uh, and the information of their clients and the consumer, um, which is at risk right now. We have yeah. seen it and it should not happen again. Exactly. Well, we hope it's a developing news story and Facebook makes big changes to secure their users' data. Thank you for joining us on Tag TV News and Views Bulletin. Till next time, I'm Ayushi Sharman.